Hey, hitting 355 will lead things off for the Lindenwood Lions as he steps in, batting right-handed. Daniel Whistler looks in. We're ready for baseball here at Taylor Stadium. The first pitch of the game on the way is a fastball in there for a strike to Shea. No homers, five runs batted in for Colin Shea. He'll be followed by James Jett and then Bryson Arnett. This pitch on the way is down and in for a ball, and the count's even. Jason Blackburn's a home plate umpire. Joshua M Nolan is down at first base. At second is Carlos Martinez, and Rick Allen is at third. As they umpire the game, and here's a swing and a ground ball hit up the middle. That's a base hit for Colin Shea. And that's how this one gets started. As Shea hit it back through the middle for a leadoff single. As Whistler gives up his 12th hit of the year, he's worked seven and a third innings. This is his fifth appearance, second start. He's one and one with an earned run average of 7.36. Whistler, a native of O'Fallon, Missouri, went to Fort Zumwalt West High School, second year player for the Missouri Tigers. They look for the double play ball as Jet steps in, hitting 214. The Southpaw Whistler checks the runner and the pitch on the way. Jet swings and it's a fly ball in the right center. And on the move is Curtis. He's there and he makes the catch for the out. Curtis slipped on his initial break but was able to make the recovery and haul in that pop-up. And there's one gone, and that brings Bryson Arnett to the play. As Jet popped it up, Arnett hitting 262. Tiger catcher today is the freshman, Mateo Serna, playing third base, Justin Cologne. Whistler from the hesitation with a check of the runner in Collin, the pitch on the way is swinging a line drive, hit pretty well in the center on the run. Curtis, he's there, and he makes the catch for the out. He'll make a throw to first, but it's not in time to double up Shea. And there's two away. As Arnett had a pretty good swing there and came up short. That brings the left-handed batter, Holcuff, to the plate. He has got a pair of home runs, four runs batted in. Two outs, top of the first. Matt Garcia gets to start it short this afternoon. His first start of the season. Whistler's pitch on the way is a little bit down. Ball one. Playing second is Trevor Austin. The first baseman is Jackson Lovich. Caden Peer, the true freshman, is in right. Jared Curtis in center. And Tucker Moore in left field. So we're underway here. Top of the first on a misting afternoon. Curveball a little high, and it's 2-0 to Holkoff. Mitch Cummings waits on deck. 3.39 down the left field line, rather right field line, 3.30 down the left field line, and 3.90 to center. The pitch from Whistler on the way is low, and it's 3-0. and oh. Whistler coming into today has walked just one. He has struck out seven. Teams are hitting 3.33 against him. He has hit a couple batters, and he's given up a pair of home runs. As Whistler ready now with a 3-0 pitch. As the lefty fires, and that's a strike at the knees, 3-1. I expected it to be overcast when I got to the ballpark today, Matt, but I didn't expect the mist. No, it kind of snuck up on us. It almost feels a little bit like that Saturday game at Cal Poly a couple weeks back. A little cooler. Here's the throw to first. I got the runner hung off the bag. The throw to second, and... The tag applied by Matt Garcia as Colin Shea is picked off. That goes one, three, six, struck out two. Walsh making this outing as a starter. Last year he started seven games as a true freshman, went three and four with 11.30 earned run average. He did not pitch against the Tigers last year. First pitch is on the way and a nice bunt laid down the third base sign and it trickles foul off the bat of Tucker Moore. When it left the bat, I thought that had a chance to be a hit, but it went foul. As Walsh now is out in front, 0-1 on the count. This is Walsh's second, uh, rather third appearance on the year. And I have to stand correct that this is his second start. Tigers wearing that gold jersey today. They've got the white pants on, trimmed in black. Lions wearing all black, trimmed in a champagne gold. We're scoreless, bottom of the first. Here's the pitch on the way from Walsh. 
And a breaking ball in there for a strike, and it's 0-2. Tucker Moore hitting 300, one homer, three runs batted in. He's riding a five-game hitting streak. The red shirt freshman trying to get it started. As Walsh now winds, and here's his 0-2. Moore swings and rolls it to the third baseman. That's gloved by Arnett. He'll throw in the dirt, but digging it out to first baseman Meyer, and there's one away. Slow roller hit the third. One gone. We'll check that defense for you. Jack Meyer is the first baseman. Tyson Ludwig's playing second. Evan Funkhauser's the shortstop. Bryson Arnett is the third baseman. Chase Honeycutt's doing the catching today. And in the outfield, Mitch Cummings is in left. Colin Shea in center, and James Jett is in right. Trevor Austin is at the plate, hitting right-handed. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing and a slow roller hit to the left side, and this is fielded by Arnett. He throws high and out, and there's two quick outs as Austin was fooled by that off-speed pitch. And the Tigers will try to get something started with two away. That brings Lovich to the plate, right in a six game hitting streak. Lovich leads Missouri with four home runs. He's knocked in 15 runs through the first 11 games. They play him straight away and not deep in right. The pitch, fastball outside, ball one. We do like to see someone hitting in the middle of the lineup producing the runs that Lovich has. Still very young in terms of his overall experience on the field, but doesn't look it. He's come up in some key spots early on for Missouri. Here comes the 1-0 on the way to Jackson. And that's off the plate. The count goes to 2-0. Looked like a slider. Bottom of the first. 0-0. Zero, zero. On deck is Caden Peer. Now the pitch. Swing and a foul back as Lovich got a big swing on a 2-0 pitch and just missed it. That was clocked at 86 miles an hour. Michael Walsh from CBC High School in St. Louis. Now the 2-1. Lovich swings and fouls it off the catcher's mask. And the count goes to 2-2. Two two. Very small gathering here today on this gray Tuesday afternoon. How do you like this 3 o'clock start time? I think it's a good start time, especially when it comes to the weather. It would only go down from here, you figure. The 2-2 two -two pitch, Lovich swings and drives one in the left. Pretty well struck. Cummings going back, has room. And shy of the track, he hauls it in, and the Tigers are retired. In the bottom of the first, was at the point when they picked off Colin Shea. Whole cuff was ahead in the count. Three and one when they picked off Shea. But he'll get a fresh count. First pitch from Whistler on the way. A swing and a foul to the left and out of play. Strike one. Holcuff, Cummings, and Meyer, the scheduled batters. Tigers have never lost to the Lions of Lindenwood. Here is the 0-1. Curveball beauty for a strike, 0-2. Whistler getting the fastball up there today at about 90 miles an hour. For a long time, Lindenwood, an NAIA school, then they became a D2 school, and now D1. There's a swing and a high drive, corked in a deep right field, going back to right fielder, at the wall is Pierre, that's gone, and it's one to nothing, Lindenwood. A home run by Holcuff, an 0-2 mistake, hanging in the hitting zone, and it's home run number three for the left-handed DH. And the Lions have the lead, one to nothing. Well, on a day like today, you have to get every last ounce of it, and Holcuff did. That one hung a little bit inside corner, and he just got the barrel of the bat there in time and launched it deep beyond the right field boards. That was about a 375-foot shot. To the plate comes Cummings, and a breaking ball for a strike on the inside corner. It's the third home run that Whistler surrendered this year. That was an 0-2 mistake, and it was belted. Left the bat at 98 miles an hour. There's a fastball and a swing and a miss by Cummings. And it's 0-2. 98 mile an hour exit velocity, 32 degree angle. Went 378 feet, Matt. Not to correct you or anything. There's a swing and a miss by Cummings, and there's one away. I'm actually proud of that. That means I've got a pretty good guess today. 
You going to Boonville later tonight? No, I think I'll keep it out of those climbs. I'll just keep it here in the booth. Out of harm's way. Yeah. <laughs> to the plate comes Meyer. No basketball game to attend tonight, right? First pitch to Meyer, changeup, swing and a miss, strike one. That's right, the home finale against Auburn University across the street, an 8 p.m. start time, so everybody who makes it here can make it over there later on. Now the 0-1 on the way to Meyer, fastball high, and it counts even at a ball and a strike. That home run given up by the Tiger pitcher was the third this year. That's the 10th home run Missouri pitchers have surrendered. Now the 1-1 pitch, swinging a number off the end of the bat, hits softly towards Austin at second. He has it, and he throws the first for the out, and there's two away. Boy, that's a, that's a difficult play, and here's why. First off, you know it's spinning. You could see it, and you're going to have to be able to handle the spin. But secondly, you know you got to rush yourself because you also know that it's hit slowly, and you got to come and get it, and it takes concentration. Yeah, it's one of those hurry but don't rush plays because if you rush it too much, you might lose grip of the baseball on a misty day like today. Here's the pitch to Honeycutt. Fastball inside, ball one. That's where having a veteran at second base helps Missouri because Austin knew exactly how much time he had and needed to make that play. Here's the 1-0. And that pitch is in the field turf, and it's 2-0. one to nothing Lions. Dawson Holcup with the home run. He got all of it. Ball carrying a little bit towards right, the pitch. Fastball at the belt for a strike and the count evens, one and one. Hokoff out of Torrance, California. Juco transfer. Now the pitch. That's low for a ball. Three balls and a strike. Ludwig waits on deck. Second inning action. Here's the pitch on the way. Whistler delivers and a foul off to the right to fill the count. Whistler's given up two hits now in this game. Infield back, outfield straight away. Now here's the payoff pitch, swing and a foul off the end of the bat. Last year, the Lions were 13 and 42 as a D1 program. Tigers beat the Lions last year two times, once here in Columbia by a score of 17 to two. A swing and a ground ball hit the third, fielded up by Cologne. He throws the first for the out, getting over. But not before the Lions get one run on that hand injury. He tells me it's still a little tender if he takes impact where the incision was made on that surgery on his hand. But other than that, he's fine. First pitch on the way to Pierce, a strike on the outside corner. Walsh has topped out today thus far, 86 miles an hour. He set the Tigers down in order in the first. The right-hander fires, and that's outside, and it counts even at one and one. Tigers down a run. Here is the pitch inside the pier. You know, on the high school level, I don't know how many times you get to face your teammate pitchers. It just doesn't happen like it does on the collegiate level where you have all the time to work in the offseason. Yeah, that's a really good question. It might not be very often during the year. The pitch on the way and a strike called on the outside corner. It really seems like you got to concentrate with your top pitchers to have them ready to work in games. Now, I might be wrong, but around the high school programs I've been around, that's always the way it's been. Here's the 2-2. Pierre takes it off the plate, I and it counts full, 3-2. and two. You might get more opportunities, honestly, at some of the baseball facilities, training, club teams, that sort of thing, if you're running in, running in the same circles as a future Division I athlete. Unless you're on the same club team. Here is the 3-2 pitch, swing and a tap foul. Of course, Walsh is actually a year older than, or ahead of, let's put it that way, a year ahead of Pierre. As Pierre steps in. Walsh rocks, and here's the payoff pitch, and he hit him. Hit him right in the hip. 
right in the hip, and the Tigers have their leadoff man aboard. And that'll bring Danny Corona to the plate, who's trying to find his rhythm. The hit batter for Walsh is the first this season. Last year, Walsh hit 12 batters. He hit 12 batters in 28 and two-third innings. That's a high number. Outfielder straight away. Walsh won an awful lot of off-speed stuff. The pitch. That's a fastball for a strike at 87. As Corona steps in, batting 200. He had 270 plus at Wake Forest a year ago with 13 home runs. Walsh comes set, and the right-hander fires, and a double play ball hit the second. They go to second one on the first, the 4-6-3 double play. As Danny Corona rolled over. And the longer the Lions are not feeling pressure, the more they're going to believe they've got a chance to get a win here today. Well, for Corona, some of the struggles have been just not being able to really elevate, and that one, again, beaten down. Maybe a little bit ahead of the pitch, too, off the front foot, and it turns into a Taylor May double play. That brings Matt Garcia to the play, making his first appearance this year. And he takes a fastball inside, ball one. Garcia last year hit 240, started 37 games, played in 44, four homers, 24 runs batted in. He was a switch hitter last year, probably will again be a switch hitter, but right now with that hand injury, he hits just left-handed. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a high fly ball, hit the left. Mitch Cummings standing almost dead in his tracks is there and he makes the catch for the out and Missouri is retired here in this podcast, which is presented by Shelter Insurance. It's the official podcast of Mizzou Athletics with hot takes, interviews, and much more. Be sure to subscribe today wherever you listen to podcasts. So Tyson Ludwig hitting 174 on the season. No home runs, four driven in. The senior second baseman waits for the first offering from Whistler, and he shows bunt, pulls it back, and takes a ball down and in. Ludwig bats from the right-hand side. Tiger defense plays him straight up. Corona behind the third baseline as the next is lined right to Danny Corona. Or check it, Justin Cologne in at third base, and Cologne makes the squeeze. Four out number one on the line out. And just like that, one away for Evan Funkhauser. He's batting 258 this year. No home runs, two driven in as Funkhauser bats for the right-hand side as well. And the left-hander Whistler fires a first pitch. Big swing and a miss at a breaking ball for strike one. Evan Funkhauser out of Edwardsville, Illinois. And the one-strike pitch dives low. Tried the breaker again at 82 miles per hour. One and one. Went to St. Charles Community College. A lot of St. Louis and Missouri natives, as you'd expect on this Lindenwood team. And the one ball, one strike pitch. It's a good fastball on the inside corner at 88, one and two. P.J. Finnegan was an assistant at SIUE for a long time after he played his collegiate ball at SIU Carbondale. One and two, this one driven down the left field line, but foul, just hooking about 10 feet foul down near the McCarter Nook. Funkhauser getting set once again. He's the nine hole hitter. One down here in this top of the third. Lindenwood, though, leads one to nothing here at Missouri. Tigers in their gold uniform tops and the white pants today. One and two. Swing and a miss, but it gets away from Cerna. He doesn't see it. It's off towards the dugout of Lindenwood and reaching first base safely on the drop third strike is Evan Funkhauser. So that's a strikeout and a wild pitch from Whistler as it bounced in and Cerna had no idea. I'm not sure it even hit him. It might have hit our home plate umpire, Jason Blackburn, and went off and to the right, and there was no chance to get Funkhauser after that. Hit the umpire in the mask after it hit the turf right out in front of the catcher. Unfortunate break for Whistler, who buried that pitch in the dirt. He got Funkhauser to chase it, and Funkhauser gets a life out of it. Colin Shea has some life. He singled his first time up, went right back up the middle with it. 
With a runner on first, the first pitch. Shea shows bunt, pushes it to the right side, forces Lovich to field it, and he tags the runner going by for the second out of the inning. Advancing to second base. Oh, they called him safe. And Lovich is saying, take a look at this. I saw Jackson Lovich tag the batter runner, Shea, right in the back. And the home plate umpire actually made the call, Jason Blackburn, to say he was safe. And Garrick Jackson comes out to the line and says, let's take a look at this. I, I'm really surprised they did not make that call out. Matt, this is going to be hard to overturn because, for one, there aren't there, there are not very many angles here today with lack of camera support. And from the camera from behind home point, it's very difficult. Same angle we had. And Carrick Jackson now out here. I don't know if he's going to have to request the review or they were hoping to get an umpire's review, but uh, I, I was really interested in how that developed because it was going to be close. Jackson's pretty convinced that he made uh, uh, made the tag, Jackson Lovich, and we'll see as umpires still huddle up in between home plate and the mound. Usually the telltale sign of this, and Shea obviously has the right to avoid the tag to some degree as he's heading down the line, but when you see someone bend their body like that, they're almost always actually tagged. And so we don't have a replay quite yet that we can look at. The umpires are still talking this one over. And again, it's a play that's in the purview of Mr. Blackburn. They and now they come it. together and they, they change the call. Over. They called him out. Without a review. Yeah, how about that? It's very rare you don't see that end up going to instant replay. And so now P.J. Finnegan comes out and says, what? He's challenging the call in the other dugout. You don't go and look at a replay. And then the first base umpire, Joshua Nolan, is now coming out to make the explanation about why that call was overturned. So it does turn into a sacrifice bunt, although Shea was trying to push that one for a hit. Sacrifice is good, three unassisted, and two second bases, Funkhauser. I mean, I was just shocked that they called him safe in the first place, but well, well, they got the, it right eventually. Here's the deal. The third base umpire and the second base umpire had probably the best angles to see that. So now with two outs, the first pitch to James Jett is a fastball outside. Still one on, and the runner's now on second base. Two out. Lindenwood leads one to nothing here in the top of the third. Well, I got Monday morning scoring issues here. I can't keep my scorebook right. One ball pitch is popped up behind home plate. Cerna looks and gives chase, but it's out into the stands and beyond into the parking lot behind Taylor Stadium and Simmons Field. Jet flied out to center field his first time up. That was in the first. I guess in the baseball world it is a Monday. First game of the week. That's right. Because you consider Sundays actually the previous week. In baseball terms, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You're finishing up all your action from the weekend. Big secondary lead off a of second for Funkhauser. He's not going. 1-1 is a good fastball in at the knees for strike two. It's one of the best pitches that Whistler's made in this game. Going right at the right-handed hitting James Jett. Looks sets like up, he's got, sets up the breaking ball. Looks like he's got some power there from the right-hand side, too. Here's that 1-2 offering from Whistler. Pauses and fires it. And fires it high and away on an 89-mile-per-hour fastball. 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, Whistler's two-seamer will run when he lets it go. He's a four-pitch pitcher. Slider, curveball change with that fastball. Jet does have one home run this season. Waits for the 2-2 two -two offering, and here it comes from Whistler. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of Cerna for strike three. Good job by Cerna to hang on to that one as he was spinning to his right, and good pitch by Whistler to are in mid-Missouri, so that opener at Arkansas. Should be one you can catch across the Midmo airwaves as long as Mother Nature doesn't play some tricks to us. Here's a first pitch to Justin Colon, and JC bunts it back to the right of the pitcher. Pretty good bunt, firing to first base in time as Walsh for the first out. Just didn't push that one enough towards the line as Walsh went to his right, picked it with the bare hand, and fired a strike for out number one. I thought Arnett was going to run him over, but they were able to dodge each other, and a nice play by Walsh. Cologne is just determined the bunny's way on. That one maybe hung up just a little bit. If he hits it on that same angle and pushes it past the pitcher, he probably has a base hit, but didn't have the juice for that. As Mateo Cerna, the Tiger catcher, stands in, and the first pitch he is outside on a fastball for ball one. Cerna, 2 of 15 on his young season. That's 133 with no homers 
and one driven in. Cerna's built like a catcher, six foot, 195, the true freshman out of Coral, Florida. The one ball pitch dives low on a breaking ball, two balls and no strikes. I better correct his hometown, Doral, Florida. If you just ask someone from around there and say Miami, they'll say, yeah, sure, Miami. It's all down there in the same swath of southeast Florida. I asked him if he grew up on a golf course, and he wouldn't answer me. <laughs> 2-0, and, oh, and Cerna bounds this back up the middle. Moving to his left, behind the second base bag is Funkhauser, and the shortstop throws out his man by two steps for the second out. You know, Funkhauser has had his problems in here, here in the early going of the season. He's made five errors. But he is a first-year shortstop, at least everyday shortstop, for the Lindenwood Lions. As he made that play, he's listed as a junior in the transfer from St. Charles, as Matt had, stayed, had stated. Now here comes Jarek Curtis, and the first pitch to the Tigers center fielder is outside for ball one. Curtis, six feet tall, 170 pounds, a little bit slender, the sophomore out of Cypress, Texas. Went to Texas Tech, didn't get a lot of opportunity, and now he's a sophomore at Missouri. The Tigers are glad to have him. The one ball pitch to Curtis is a breaker that misses high, 2-0. Couple Tiger fans making their way here to Taylor Stadium. Plenty of good seats for you. Might just want to bundle up a bit on a gray day here in early March. You know, it's interesting. Tyson Ludwig, the second baseman, was the everyday shortstop last year. Curtis takes the next and bounds it right back to the pitcher. Gloving it is Walsh, and he flips over to first, and the side is retired. Michael Walsh has faced the minimum through three innings. They've got to make an adjustment. You look at what's happened. Nobody's hit the ball hard. A couple pop-ups to left field, but those balls were hit off the front foot. Bryson Arnett stands in. He actually has one of the better hit balls of the afternoon so far. A line out into the gap in right center that Jared Curtis ran down. First pitch, big swing and a miss. Good off-speed delivery at 80 miles per hour from Daniel Whistler. I really think it's important to stretch him out a little bit here. He's just got to get that good feeling going with his rhythm. The one strike pitch is a fastball just off the inside corner and that did not miss by much. One and one to the three hole hitter Bryson Arnett, the third baseman for the Lions. And the pitch dives low, two balls and one strike. The lights of course on here at Taylor Stadium on a gray day like today. Could lose the ball up in those clouds if you aren't careful. Two and one pitch is low and inside again. Tried the breaking ball that time. Three and one now to the leadoff hitter in this fourth inning for Lindenwood. I actually think it's easier to catch the ball today than it is in twilight. Here comes the 3-1 pitch, and it's fouled back to the screen and a big swing from Arnett. You get some sort of definition up there, but it's all just that same color. I don't know how easy it is to see it against that one color, but you're right, in the twilight when the light's playing tricks with it, tricks with it that's the toughest of all. Payoff pitch. And Arnett lofts this one into center field. Curtis makes a run to his left in the gap. He's under it, and he makes the catch for the first out of the fourth inning. Curtis took control of that fly ball early. You can see the Tiger right fielder, Peer, pull up as Curtis was calling him off from the get-go. Love to see that communication, especially with guys that haven't been playing long together in the outfield. You got Curtis, who saw minimum action last year at Texas Tech. Pair of the true freshman in right. Dawson Hocuff hit a home run. That's the difference in this game, and he lofts one high and deep to right again. Pierre, though, might have room. Heading towards the corner, slips a bit, and now makes the catch just about 15 feet to the left of the line in fair territory for the second out. And Hocuff didn't miss that by much. No, he did not. He got the barrel on it, got under it a little bit, dropped that back shoulder. Pierre looked like he was on skis out there in the corner as he was on the edge of the track and the, and the outfield grass. Of course, the outfield's a natural surface. Track out beyond the outfield is crushed red brick. So now Mitch Cummins stands in for Lindenwood and takes a big swing and a miss at a good off-speed pitch 0-1. That yeah. might have been the straight change. Yeah, I think it was. I don't think it was straight. It had a lot of tail to it and dipped away from the right-hander. But it was a change. 0-1 pitch, big swing and a miss at a high fastball, 0-2, and Whistler in control here, looking to mow down the Lions in the fourth. 
Whistler's longest outing of the season now, going three and two-thirds. I think it's the longest in his career. He fires the 0-2. Fastball swung on and fouled back behind the stands. We'll try again. Confirmed that, but I think Whistler now has worked deeper into this game than he has any other game wearing the black and gold. That sounds about right. And that is true. Even pushed into service last year, he didn't have one quite like this. Another 0-2 pitch from Daniel. Swing and a miss, strike three. Gave him the change up away, and Cummins is a victim for the second time. Four strikeouts for Whistler as he sets down the Lions. One, two, three. Maybe that gives the four details. Daniel Whistler's through four complete. Now his Tiger teammates are trying to get this lead back for him and put him in a position to maybe pitch a fifth inning and get himself in line for the win. Tucker Moore has to start things off. One, two, three in the Missouri lineup due. The first pitch from Michael Walsh is on the outside corner of breaking ball, strike one. A lot of off-speed pitches. I bet it's three to one. Off-speed to fastballs, maybe even a higher ratio than that. Walsh working from the third base side of the rubber. The right-hander against the right-handed hitting Moore. And he swings to Tucker and bounds this one weakly back to the pitcher. Moving to his left and fielding is Walsh. And he flips underhand to first for the out. And he has faced 10 and 10 have gone down. He's faced the minimum so far. Well, when he said he was going to throw the kitchen sink at him, he as in P.J. Finnegan, he wasn't kidding. That was a change up. Moore rolled over, hit it off the end of the bat. Would have been better served if he would have missed it. And now Trevor Austin. He was on his front foot his first time. Rolled out to the third baseman, Bryson Arnett. Yeah, a ball he could have fielded barehanded. First pitch to the Tigers, second baseman on the way from Walsh. And it's a fastball in there for a strike. Actually, 81 miles per hour. Maybe a little bit of motion on that and just hung up there against Trevor. Yeah, I think it was a hanging changeup. He was taking all the way. A hanging change. A 1-1 pitch. This time it falls in there for strike two. 76 miles per hour on the curveball. Well, the action is already underway. I say a little. Kentucky is hosting Eastern Kentucky. They're scoreless top of the third inning. That's in Lexington. Here's the two-strike pitch to Austin. Off the outside corner, one and two. And another game underway down at Arkansas. Arkansas is trailing Central Arkansas 2 0, top the third. Everything else is later. Jacksonville State at Alabama. They'll get started here in a little bit. 1 2 offering. And Austin corks this one into left field, a base hit. First hit for the Tigers today as Trevor makes the adjustment and stands on first with one out. Yeah, he stayed back, trusted his hands, got the breaking ball and lined it in the left field. And that's what it takes, just some discipline at the point. Let it get there, get within the moment. Within the pitch, really. Yeah. Jackson Lovich will try to do the same. I can't tell you, Tex, I saw it earlier, Jacksonville State and Alabama were postponed today. They will reschedule it for a later date. So, too, were Florida Atlantic and Florida. They're rescheduled for April 30th already. First pitch to Lovich, and he sends this one to the opposite field, a base hit. Fielding it on one hop is Jet. Checking into second is Austin. The ball gets away on the relay in from the cutoff man, but no more harm done. Back-to-back -back singles for the Tigers with one out in the fourth, trailing by a run, and Caden Pierce standing in. Second time through the order. These hitters getting a second look at Michael Walsh. I like the approach by Lovich. He went the other way with his approach. Pitch was middle out, and he went with it. Outfielders play in just a touch against Peer, it looks like here, on a cold day with the wind at their backs out of the north and northeast. Walsh's first pitch gets away from the catcher, down and in, advancing to second base is Austin and he slides into the ball, gets away. Austin comes home. From second base to third comes Lovich. And the Tigers have a run to tie the game. It's one to one. Well, it'll be two stolen bases and a throw and error allowing Austin to come from third to home. And then that error will also permit Lovich to go to third base representing the go ahead run. It was a fastball down in the field turf and Austin read that well and took off on the break. The catcher Honeycutt then maybe rushed his throw to third, and it got away from Arnett, and that allows Austin to score, and Lovich goes from second to third. Yeah, was he going on a pitch, or was that advanced on a wild pitch? They've, they're calling it a wild pitch, at least for now. Now Caden Pierre is a runner on third, one out, needs a fly ball. The next pitch is low, 
evens the count, or check it, makes it 2-0. Two, two balls, no strikes, one out, and the Tigers have a run home on the wild pitch, then throwing error by the catcher. Honeycutt really rushed that throw and handcuffed his third baseman. Michael Walsh delivers, and the fastball runs away and low from Pierre, and he's up 3-0 in the count. Well, first time up, Pierre was hit by his former teammate Walsh. Now Walsh wants nothing to do with Pierre with that runner at third. First and second base open right here. Danny Corona rolled out into a 4-6-3 double play his last time. Maybe they're being careful with the Tiger right fielder. In just a bit at third base is Arnett on this 3-0 pitch. And that's well inside ball four. Gets away just briefly from Honeycutt, but he's able to keep it near the cutout. And Pierre has worked a one-out walk. Well, command was the concern going into this game for Michael Walsh. He's had command, but not against Caden Peer. And now Danny Corona has an opportunity to drive in the Tigers' go-ahead run here. We're in the bottom of the fourth, one home for the Tigers, tied with Lindenwood at one apiece. And the Lions' starting pitcher, Michael Walsh, has not had great success the second time through the Missouri lineup. Nobody apparently up in the bullpen behind him as Walsh makes a token pickoff throw to first and back in plenty of time is Caden Peer. You got very good speed on the corners here. With only one out though, you got to let Corona swing the bat. But you're going to send Peer. You got to to stay out of the double play. He edges out his lead. Not going now as Corona takes a change up inside for ball one. Tigers. And the Lions meeting for the third time in the last two seasons. They'll meet later this year here at Taylor Stadium in Simmons Field as well. Yeah, they make a return trip. I'm all for that. Nothing One, against St. Charles, but it's not my favorite place to go work a game. Well, we've got a little bit more warmth here as a pickoff throw. Again, just token to Pierre, and he dives in safely. Friendly confines are much better than the Ozzy Smith complex. Jackson Lovich at third, and Pierre dives into first on another pickoff attempt. At least from our viewpoint. Well, it's as good a viewpoint as you get really anywhere in the SEC when it comes to watching a game. I yeah. am partial to it. You have shelter here. You've got shelter here and a little bit of heat for the Tootsies on a day like oh, today. We can turn it up. Pier goes, and this one is grounded to the first baseman. Holding there is Meyer, and he backpedals to step on first to keep Lovich frozen at third base. So Corona unfortunately cannot get the run home on that ground out three unassisted. Pierre was going, he winds up at second base, and it'll be up to Matt Garcia for a two-out hit to give the Tigers the lead. Plus, as well as you could play it, Jack Meyer gloved that ball, froze the runner at third, didn't worry about the runner going from second to, from first to second, and records the out. Of course, it was hit right to him by Corona. So now Garcia looking for his first hit of a young season. First pitch, takes a half swing and a miss, tried to check up on that breaking ball and came up with air for strike one. Garcia, 240 hitter a season ago with four home runs and 24 driven in. He was on base about 35% of the time. Yeah, Garcia's got to be disciplined here. This is tough for a guy that's hitting for just the second time. 0-1, fastball, swung on and fouled. Back past the light standards off to the left and out of play. And quickly in the hole, 0-2 is Matt Garcia. Again, batting from the left-hand side exclusively for now. Still nursing that. Hammett bone surgery, which went well and has him back here in action to start for the first time this year. 0-2 pitch from Walsh, and it's inside and hit him in the shoulder. Maybe in the elbow as Garcia takes off the paraphernalia. But it he, wasn't in the hand. Thank goodness, he wears it. And Justin Colon as the base is loaded, and two outs looking to give the Tigers a lead in this 1-1 game. You know, that uh, really stings if you're a Lions fan because the Lions right-hander Walsh had Garcia right where he wanted him, and he lost him hitting him with that pitch. So now J.C., who bunted, and it was fielded by the pitcher, Walsh throwing to first in plenty of time. His first time up in the third inning now stands in in the fourth. First pitch to J.C. is low and away in the field turf for ball one. No place to put him here. So the Tigers have Lovich on third. Pierre on second, and Garcia after the hit by pitch leading off of first base. Infield play straight up, outfield again, a little bit shallow on this cooler, windy day against Justin Colon. And the 1-0 is a check swing, fouled back. That one might have been called ball two on a 
bit of a high changeup, but unfortunately, Cologne's bat got in the way. Yeah, Cologne's eyes opened up, and he thought he had something to hit, realized that's too far in. And it was too late. He couldn't get out of the way. Now the 1-1 to J.C. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Ran a fastball up and away from him, did Walsh. And now in the hole one and two is the Tiger third baseman, the native of Carolina, Puerto Rico. A couple other games, K-State's at Tennessee, the Citadel at South Carolina, Georgia, Georgia Southern. That's always a fun one. One-two offering from Walsh. And a check swing by J.C. Foul off to the stands beyond right field. We'll try again. Here's another good matchup. Southern Miss at Mississippi State. Memphis at Ole Miss. A&M and Texas hook up tonight in non-conference play. It won't be non-conference for long, whether anybody there likes it or not. Another 1-2 offering to Cologne, and he takes it high and away for ball two. And that game between Mississippi State and Southern Miss being played in neutral ground of Pearl, Mississippi, where they've tangled a few times before. We've been to Pearl. Flew out of there once. Now the 2-2 to the Tiger third baseman he is off the outside corner. Lions thought they earned the strikeout, and J.C. has earned a full count. Cologne scares me a little bit because he takes these pitches, and in his reaction to the pitch, he steps forward. You could see them trying to call him out for if he would step on the play. Don't turn those hips at all, that's for sure. Here comes the full count offering to Cologne. Outside ball four, they walked in a run. Justin Cologne works it from a 1-2 count to first base. It's an RBI for J.C., his ninth of the season, and Missouri leads 2-1. to one. Boy, Walsh looks like a different pitcher. Gave up a couple base hits. Then he lost somewhat of his composure, and now his command as he's hit a batter, or he's walked two in the inning. And that will now send a few heavily jacketed Lions to the right field bullpen, perhaps to begin work. It's an opportunity for the Tiger catcher, Mateo Cerna, batting for the left-hand side. First pitch, he is swung on and fouled. Back past the catcher, an umpire for strike one. Cerna, again, looking for just his third Missouri hit, and it would be a big one in this game. Tigers have two in the home half of the fourth. They now lead Lindenwood 2-1 to one on a cold, gray day here at Taylor Stadium where runs appear to be at a premium. Cerna settles in, and here's Walsh's one-strike pitch. Fastball high. One ball, one strike. Strike while the iron's hot. Well, for the way the offense went the first three innings where Walsh faced the minimum, this has now become much more productive for the Missouri Bats the second time through. The 1-1 pitch is off speed and lined into left center field. That's down for a base hit. One run scores. Coming around third base to score is Garcia. The throw is cut off, and the Tigers lead 4-2, to two, or 4-1, to one, on the RBI single by Mateo Cerna. How about that? The freshman stayed back, went the other way, stayed on that pitch, drove it into the gap, picks up RBIs 2-3 and three in his career here at the University of Missouri, and the Tigers are off and running. That was really a necessary play in this game. Getting the bases loaded today might not be a usual occurrence, even with midweek pitching perhaps still to be offered from both sides, as now we see a visit from the dugout of the Lindenwood Lions, and that work is starting in earnest down in the right field bullpen. Not sure if it's a Como smoke and fire pitching change yet, but Walsh has run into trouble. Got a leadoff out on a ground out right back to him from Tucker Moore. Then Austin singled, Lovich singled, Pierre worked a walk, Corona grounded out to the first baseman, then Garcia was hit by an 0-2 pitch, Cologne worked a walk to drive in a run, and then Mateo Cerna serving one into left center field to chase home Pierre and Garcia for a 4-1 advantage. I have all four runs earned with that only error in the ball game being a throwing error, which is covered up now by a hit batter and now the base hit. So the Tigers have busted through here in the home half of the fourth. One run on two hits, one error for the Lions. Now four runs on three hits, no errors for Missouri. Jared Curtis is the ninth man to bat in the inning. The first pitch to Curtis is a breaking ball in there for strike one. That overhand curve ball at 76 miles per hour from Walsh, who might have gotten away from that breaker a little bit too much in the second inning. Tigers have lit him up one way or the other. Curtis 
Wearing the mustache. Works here with a one ball pitch, or one strike pitch, excuse me, and that's called strike two on the outside corner, a close pitch. Walsh is the one wearing the mustache. Curtis has the dreadlocks peeking out from underneath his helmet. The right-hander for Lindenwood comes set. And here's his 0-2. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of Honeycutt to retire the side. It's the first strikeout for Walsh in his outing, but not until the damage is done. Four Missouri runs come home on three hits. There was one error and two Tigers left on base. We've played four complete. The new score, Missouri four. Linden. Boy, the way things have gone of late, it's a little early to think about stuff like that. First off, Whistler's got to work through this fifth inning as Jack Meyer will lead it off. Whistler winds, first pitch on the way to Meyer. Breaking ball in there, strike one. Whistler has struck out four. That is a season high, ties his career high. He struck out four batters last year against Texas Southern in a two inning outing. And we got time called. Apparently the wagon gate blew open out in center field. Jerry Curtis went over and latched it tight. Here comes the 0-1 on the way. Swinging a soft ground ball, hit the third. Garcia, challenge, picks it, throws it. Out at first base is Meyer. Matt Garcia, challenged on that slow roller. Cologne said, you're on your own, buddy. He didn't try to cut it <laughs> off. And Garcia came through and made the play. Well, that was just like old times for Matt Garcia, right? Charged that one like he's done it a thousand times before, really because he has. And no hint of an injury in either the glove or the throw that time. He looked great. Honeycutt steps in. He's 0 for 1. First pitch swinging a soft liner in the left for a base hit. Honeycutt with a base hit with one out. As he got a breaking ball, hit it early, but still was able to get enough of the good part of the bat on the ball for a base hit. As Whistler now will try to induce the double play. Hits are now even, three per team, but Missouri has a four to one lead. Nobody's warming behind Daniel Whistler right now, Tex. There are a couple of Tigers in the bullpen beyond the left field fence, but it's his ball game, and if he gets through this fifth inning, he'll be staked to the lead and in line for the victory here today. Still a bit of work to do here in this fifth, but it has to be a great lift under his sails to see that four spot in the home half of the fourth. Whistler from the hesitation. Here's the lefty's pitch and a fastball for a strike at 87 miles an hour to Ludwig. Ludwig hitting a buck 74. Ludwig waits. And the pitch. Swing and a miss and a sinker. And it's 0-2. Still like to see Whistler using the mix. He has that fastball that he's able to ride high. It looks a lot faster than the upper 80s, low 90s when he mixes that breaker in like he just did. Here comes the pitch. That's swinging him as he ran it away from him. That was the change up, two away. As Ludwig is retired, that's strikeout number five for Daniel Whistler. The old Fort Zumal West Jaguar. Is that how you say it, Jaguar? I know it's how they say it in Britain. Some people say Jaguar or Jagwire. Jagwire isn't really right. Funkhauser steps in. The former Edwardsville Tiger checks his swing and takes it low. Ball one. The Jaguar is acceptable. You ever want to uh, do some advertising for the car company? They'd, they'd take that pronunciation. I'd like to drive one of those once. From the set. For the eliminate gasoline, the pitch is high for a ball, and it counts 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes. Runner at first, two outs here in the top of the fifth. It's a British car. You know, they might run on, like, spent oil or something like that from the chip shop. From the set, Whistler pitches low for a ball, 2-1. and one. If you have to call it. And say the say the name correctly for you to have the opportunity to drive it. <laughs> you got to pass. Maybe pass. <laughs> maybe someone looks down their nose and says, "Sir, you're going to have to say this name the right way." 
or the I way bet, we like it. I bet if you write a check big enough, it won't matter. Whistler deals. Fastball right down central to make it a 3-1 count to the number nine batter, Funkhauser, who reached on a swing and a miss and a wild pitch his first time up and then was stranded. I'll do you one better if you just hand a couple of big bagfuls over like rich Uncle Penny bags, they say, right this way. Yeah, that's right. Here is the 3-1. Swing and a foul. Curveball, and Funkhauser was way out in front. 4-1, Tigers lead. We're in the fifth inning. Outfield straight away. Overcast skies, but the skies have brightened just a bit. Maybe that's because Missouri's got the three-run lead. The wind has shifted just a tad as well, according to Old Glory down the right field line. Here is the 3-1 pitch, and it's low for ball four. And there's two on with two up. Interesting, though, 33 of the 50 have been strikes, and all of a sudden he has issued a walk. That's the first walk he's issued today. He has uncorked a wild pitch. As he works with runners first and second. Shea steps in. Right-handed batter waits. Whistler with the pitch. Outside ball one. I don't know if Whistler so much lost his command or just trying to hit spots and not being successful. Colin Shea, a senior out of Belleville West High School, Belleville, Illinois. Whistler kicks and pitches. Fastball swung at, fouled back, count even, and a ball and a strike. Well, he challenged him there, did Whistler, and Shea was up to the task. He just missed that one, fouling it straight back to the screen. Shea, a year ago, started 20 games as a true freshman, hitting 260. No homer, seven runs bad at the end. Now the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a foul off the end of the bat, strike two. One and two to count. Runners will have to retreat. They're off on contact with a two-out situation here. Tigers with that 4-1 lead. Wind blowing from the left field wall towards that right field line. Whistler ready. Here is his 1-2 pitch. Swing and a tap foul. As Shea reached out and just got a piece of it to extend the at-bat and the inning. Well, here's some good news, Tex. Jack Lundin of the Missouri men's golf team. Had another second place finish in the golf team's tournament this weekend. He's one of 15 golfers in the country to be up for the Haskins Award in the spring, which is basically the Heisman Trophy of college golf. Here's the one, two. Swing and a tap foul. Just got a piece. And the Tiger men finished fifth, in a tie for fifth at the Colleton River Collegiate today. And Mr. Lundin is making a name for himself. He finished at 11 under par in a tie for second. Runner stretch their leads. Another one, two. Fastball missed high. Tried to get Shea to chase, and he laid off of it. Two and two. On deck is James Jett. Cool afternoon here at Taylor Stadium, about 46, 47 degrees. Overcast skies. The mist has stopped. Whistler now ready with a two, two. Swing and a fly ball hit to right. Should be handled by Pierre. He's there. He's got it. Inning over. No runs, one hit, no errors, two runners. Runs in this outing on just three hits. He has had the Tigers off balance. He has made 57 pitches on the day, but he's hit two batters and he's walked two and he's uncorked a wild pitch. First pitch on the way to Moore from the right-hander. Swing and a smash, hammered foul past the lounge and out of play even for those fans down in the lounge. As Tucker Moore out of Castle Rock, Colorado, steps back in. Now the pitch. Curveball high, counts even. Ball and a strike. You've been out to Colorado a number of times. You've been to Castle Rock? I have not been to Castle Rock yet. I have been out near uh, Red Rocks, though. Beautiful out there, the amphitheater and all those formations. I've actually been there too. Here is the pitch. It's low for a ball. I've also been to Castle Rock, two and, a, a two and one. How does Castle Rock look? Is it named after a big rock? 
There are some rocks along I-35. There should be or some adjacent it 45. rocks. 45. I'm yeah. trying to remember what interstate that is. Maybe it's 30. Here is the 2-1. Swing and a pop-up into right center. The wind's going to push this towards the right fielder. On the move is Shea, and he's there, and he makes the catch for the one gone as Moore popped it up. You were 10 off. It's up by 25. 25. I knew it was been down that road. Yeah, south of Denver between Denver and Colorado Springs. Yeah, right next door to Monument. Right? And not far from the Air Force Academy. Yeah, not really that far at 35 all. 35 miles maybe from the Air Force Academy. To the plate comes Austin. Here's the pitch to Trevor. Slider for a strike with the outside corner. Austin one for two. He's hit safely down his last three games, including this one. Lowage has extended his hitting straight to seven. He waits on deck. Tigers lead four to one. Walsh has the sign, rocks and the pitch. That's low and in the field turf in the count evens. Castle Rock, Colorado does have a rock park. It's just called Rock Park. So yes, there are rocks in Castle Rocks. In fact, those might be the ones you saw from the interstate. It's right on the front range of the Rockies. This pitch is low and away, two and one. If you're ever really missing rocks out in Colorado and you're on I-35, just look west. You'll see them. I-25. I-25, that's See, right. you're trying to no, talk. I did it, too. Yeah. 35, that goes up to Minneapolis. There's a break a ball in there for a strike, two and two. Yeah, 35 goes right through Des Moines and all the way up to the Twin Cities. We should Ask Ben Peterson if he sees mountains when he looks west. Here comes the 2-2. Swing and a pop-up. Foul ball. Wind's going to push us out of play as the catcher, Honeycutt, has no chance. Two balls, two strikes. Tigers do not want to rest on the laurels here. They lead 4-1, to one, but would like to mount another attack. After this past weekend, and Nothing will feel safe. Tigers had a two-run lead late in that game on Sunday and lost at 16-15. Scored 28 runs on Saturday and still gave up 10. Austin swings and fouls off a borderline pitch to extend his at bat. Week ago today, Tigers opened this homestand with Seymour. That was a tough day for the Tigers. Fall into the Red Hawks. Eight to three in a rain shortened game. Austin swings and misses. He struck him out with a changeup. And Walsh records the strikeout. That's his second of this game. Well, after he ran into some trouble in the fourth inning and the Tigers knocked down a couple of one out singles against him to put Walsh on the ropes, he's recovered very nicely here, Tex. I think you got to give him credit for coming out the third time through and getting his first two batters faced. Jackson Lovich now steps in. He's one for two. First pitch to Lovich, swing and a miss and an off-speed pitch, strike one. Caden Peer waits on deck. Outfielder straight away for Lovich. Shortstop tucked in the hole. Second baseman on right field grass, the pitch. Lovich takes it inside for a ball. One and one. Well, Walsh is right at the ship, hasn't he? After giving up those four runs on three hits, he's now retired three in a row. He works here in the bottom of the fifth, the pitch. Lovich swings and skies it in the right center. The right fielder jet drifts over, he's there. He makes the catch and the Tigers go one, two, three here in the bottom. In the middle of this contest where he needs to keep things status quo against a Lindenwood team that feels they might be able to mount something here against the Tiger pen. Stepping in is the big right-handed batter, James Jett. He's 0 for 2. That was against the lefty. Now McDevitt looks in. And his first pitch on the way. Fastball in there for a strike, 89 mile an hour. McDevitt will gas it up there in the low 90s. A Cobo smoke and fire pitch and change. Cobo smoke and fire voted the best barbecue in Columbia. This pitch is inside for a ball, 1-1. One and one. Four to one, Missouri leads. 
McDevitt deals, and there's a two-seam fastball for a strike on the inner half. As Big Josh McDevitt winds and pitches. Breaking ball on the field turf. That evens it. Two and two. Arnett on deck. McDevitt's last outing was against Northern Kentucky. In that crazy game, 28-10, Tiger win. Here is his 2-2. And a breaking ball hit foul past that first base dugout that's occupied by the Lindenwood Lions. McDevitt pitched on Saturday, went one inning, gave up two hits, no runs, struck out one. Here comes the pitch on the way. Check swing. Did he go? They asked for the appeal. And the first base umpire, Joshua Nolan, said he didn't go. Cerna thought that he had. He was ready to chuck it down to third. Now the payoff pitch on the way to Jet. Right down central. That struck him out looking. Inning uh, one out here in the top of the sixth inning as Jet struck out to close out the third inning. Swinging, this time he strikes out looking, and that's a good start for McDevitt. Well, McDevitt did what he had to do there. He threw strike three and left no debate about it to our home plate umpire, Jason Blackburn. Looked like Jet was caught guessing and guessed wrong. Arnett comes in, first pitch on the way, slider outside, ball one. The freshman, Josh McDevitt. He hurls. That fastball a little off the plate. McDevitt, I'm sure, is a guy that'd like to see more opportunities. He keeps throwing the way he has, though. He probably will. Here is the 2 0. Swing and a line drive, laced in the right. That's trouble, and that heads towards the corner. That'll be extra bases for Arnett as. It's dug out of the corner, and it'll be a double for Arnett. First hit given up by McDevitt. He left that out over to plate. He fell behind 2-0 and grooved it. And Arnett didn't try to do too much with it. Went with that pitch. Yeah, that was a good piece of hitting. Something interesting there in the right field corner. It looked like maybe in just foul territory, it might have lodged underneath. The padding out there, and Caden Peer threw up his hands, and so did Jackson Lovich, asking for that to be ruled a ground rule double, but the umpire said, no, nah, that's not the case. Holcuff steps in. Here's the pitch on the way, swinging a line drive, foul into the bleachers down the left field line. Yeah, that would have been interesting if Arnett would have kept running. He was satisfied with a double because I think he could have stretched that to a triple. And here's the deal, Matt. If they think that ball is lodged up in there, you don't touch it. Maybe it was in there and then rolled back out. Here's the pitch. Low for a ball, two and one. That could be. Uh, but I know Pierre threw up his hands and Lovich uh, tried to that. mirror it. Yeah. And then Pierre decided better of it and said, I better just get it in. From the stretch. McDevitt ready to pitch to Holcup. He hit him. As Holcup is hit by the pitch, and now there's two on with one out, and Mitch Cummings will be the batter. Yeah, it would have been interesting if they had played at the Tigers as if that ball was lodged up in there, and then, you know, if that ever happens, we got a visit, and it looks like a pinch hitter, but if that happens, you're a base runner. Just keep running. Yeah. There's no reason not to take the bases that you feel you're entitled to. Make the umpires turn you back. Yeah, they'll send you back. The pinch hitter in the game is Logan Stevens. He is a left-handed batter. He bats for Meyer. As Stevens steps in with two on. And one out. He is a grad student out of Louisiana, a transfer from Tulane. Tigers need the double play ball. 
McDevitt fires. Strike called inside corner. 0-1. In limited action, Stevens is one of this team's better hitters. 5 of 13. He's only started four games. He's made appearances in eight, so he's hitting 385 with no homers, two knocked in. McDevitt checks the runner, the pitch. Swinging a ground ball, base hit into right field. Rounding third is Arnett. Here's the throw to the plate. It's offline and safe at the plate is Arnett on that high throw. Holkoff went from first to third and the pinch hitter. Stevens is at first base with an RBI single and it's a four to two ball game. Boy, this when we start bragging on McDevitt, he's giving up a couple hits here. Well, that was a good approach that time from Stevens. Just knocked that one directly through the right side of the infield. Tough play for Jackson Lovich, really, as it caught him in between on the step dive and bounced above his glove. And Pierre has an arm that can throw out that runner around third base, Arnett. He just sailed it a little bit towards the vicinity of the plate. Actually, Stevens pinched hit for Cummings. Now to the plate, the right-handed batter, and a sweeping breaking ball to Meyer is outside ball one. Tigers got to stop the bleeding here. Runners on the corner, still one out. McDevitt comes set. Here's his pitch, and square to bunt is the batter, Myers. The only play will be to first base, and a run will score. As Austin takes the throw from Lovich. It's a sacrifice for Meyer, and an RBI picks up his fourth of the year. That put out goes three to four. And in the score is Holcuff. And on the play, Stevens goes to second base. And a couple runs have come in, and it's a 4-3 ball game. That was a well-executed safety squeeze. Meyer making sure to push it towards the first baseman to force Lovich into a decision, which he made handily, and Austin with a good cover. Honeycutt the batter. McDevitt fires, Honeycutt takes a sweep and break the ball outside ball one. Yeah, very well executed. Bunt by Meyer, he bunted it well. And they get that second run of the inning home. McDevitt comes set. Here's the right-hander's pitch and a cutter in there for a strike. It's one and one. Moments ago, I thought the skies were getting lighter, and now they look like they're darkening again. Josh McDevitt ready to pitch to Honeycutt, who's one for two in the game. This pitch hit foul off to the right, not a play. One and two. Now this is really the first time we've seen McDevitt, obviously with runs in against him, but also in a spot where he has to perform here. You know, the outcome of this game could ride on these pitches so let's see how McDevitt responds when his back's against the wall right hander checks the runner at second and the pitch swing and a foul Tyson Ludwig waits on deck it's also not lost on me that McDevitt out of Effingham Illinois could have some history with a couple of these Lindenwood Lions in both pasts Chase Honeycutt steps back in. Now the offering. Fastball just missed low to Honeycutt. Honeycutt out of South Haven, Mississippi. That's just south of Memphis. Suburb of Memphis. Now a 2-2 on the way to the catcher. From McDevitt, curveball fouled off. McDevitt's looking for that put away pitch today. He's struggling to find that. Oh, he very nearly had it there. He had Honeycutt well out on the front foot and the catcher did a good job of keeping the hands back just long enough to tap that one foul in the right-handed box. 4-3 here in the sixth inning. Josh McDevitt comes set. The right-hander brings it home. Fastball struck him out, looking on the outside corner. Honeycutt is gone. In the inning, two runs in the inning on two hits. There were no errors in just a little bit as Logan Stevens takes over in right field and James Jett goes from right to left. 
And Caden Pierre will step in, looking for his first official at bat against his former teammate, Michael Walsh. He is, Pierre has walked and he's been hit by a pitch. One run ball game, here's the pitch to Pierre. Swing and a foul to the left and out of play, strike one. Pierre hitting 263 on the day. He's hit safely in the last two games. Former CBC cadet batting left-handed, the pitch. And the fastball's outside, even to count, one and one. Corona on deck, then Matt Garcia. Tigers have a lot of left-handed batters in the middle of that order. Here is the pitch. Outside, two and one. Missouri's been rolling over on that pitch a little bit here today. Doing a little better job here laying off. Lights on, overcast day. It's early March. Here's the offering. Swing and a miss. Ran that one away from him. Two and two. Pierre got his advantage count and unfortunately came up empty. Good effort to run it away from him from this right-hander Walsh. I think you'll see that pitch again. Here comes the 2-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with the exact same pitch. One away. Third strikeout for Walsh. And that brings Corona to the plate. Danny is hit into a double play, and he's bounced out to the first baseman. He is fighting. As the veteran steps in the left-handed box. Corona, 6'3", 215-pounder. From the Baylor school, he swings and pops this one up on the infield. Who wants it? Second baseman Ludwig has it, and there's two away. Caught it near the pitching mound. And Garcia bats. Well, a team that is not fighting it today, the Kentucky Wildcats Techs. They lead it home in the bottom of the sixth against the visitors from Eastern Kentucky, nine to nothing. Some games that are just in action. Eastern Michigan and Vanderbilt just getting underway in Nashville. Florida Atlantic and Florida have not started yet. Kansas State at Tennessee starts later. So a lot of action a little bit later on. Garcia steps in, first pitch on the way. Tabat is in there for a strike. Another one that's in action. Central Arkansas at Arkansas and UCA has fought back with four in the top of the fifth but they still trail at Arkansas seven to six as seven runs came home in the third for the Hawks. Here's the 0-1. Garcia rifles it in a right for a base hit, his first hit of the year. As Matt is aboard with two away for Justin Cologne. And that's Missouri's fourth hit of the game. That looked like old times for Matt Garcia, didn't it? Mm -hmm. We saw quite a few of those last year, some of them in key situations as game winners for the black and gold. And he keeps things moving with a two out knock and brings up Cologne who does have some potential of popping that bat. Cologne steps up, he's 0-1. First pitch on the way, low and away, ball one. Mateo Cerno waits on deck. Tigers looking for some insurance. Their lead has been cut to one. The veteran Garcia gets a lead. He runs well. Now Walsh fires, the runner goes, the pitch is down and in, the throw to second base. Not in time, it'll be a stolen base for Matt Garcia. Had a good pitch to run in. Run on, a breaking ball low. And the Tigers have a stolen base in this game. That worked out, and by the way, Tex, he did slide in head first and looking very comfortable with that left hand going in with the glove on it. Yeah, he's got a big old pad on that thing. But he doesn't wear the mitt. Here is the pitch now on the way to Cologne in the field turf, ball three. Cologne drew a bases loaded walk in the fourth inning to force in the go-ahead run. Then a big hit from Mateo Cerna to drive in a couple more. Here's the 3 0 on the way to Cologne. Wild pitch outside. There goes Garcia to third. And the Tigers have runners on the corners. 
with two away in the sixth inning. Third walk issued by Walsh, who's, you would think, starting to tire here a little bit. He's made 70-plus pitches in this outing. And I do wonder if that might be all for him as a right-hander has been warm for the Lions for the last little bit and appears to be entering the game as Michael Walsh gave it all he had today, but the Tigers got to him for a four spot in the fourth and now threatened for a two-out rally here in the sixth. It's a Como Smoke and Fire pitching change as the Tigers look to heat the bats up once again, leading over Lindenwood four to three. We'll tell you about the new arm in a moment on the Central Bank Tiger Network from Learfield. Raceline alternative. RBI single driving home two in the fourth inning. That was a two-out knock for Cerna, just his third hit of the year, and did a good job of guiding that the opposite way. Might need the same approach here against a new right-hander. Cerna one for two. He steps in. Garcia with a lead at third. Here's the first pitch. Low and away, ball one. I was just thinking in the back of my mind, all right, this guy's coming into this game. He's all wound up. He's liable to uncork a wild pitcher on the first delivery, and he almost did. The curveball is outside and in the field turf near the right hand of batter's box. Here's his next pitch on the way, a swing and a miss, and a pitch out of the zone. As Cerna, ch as Cerna chased it, and the count's even at one and one. He's nodding his head. He said, yep, yeah, that... That was the mistake as that fastball tailed away from the left-handed hitting Cerna. From the stretch, the pitch. Swing and a miss. And now Cerna's in trouble at one and two with runners on the corners. Do you start the double steal here? You got left-handed batter up there. Cologne checks the signs. He gets a lead at first. Garcia at third. Here's the one-two pitch on the way. And a swing and a miss. It's Mateo Cerna strikes out, and the Tigers strand two. No runs, one hit, no errors. Home run in the second and scored the third run after being hit by a pitch and chased home on Logan Stevens' RBI single. Going to get a pinch hitter for the second baseman. Tyson Ludwig will be lifted, and Anthony Stiletto will take over. He'll be a left-handed batter out of Darien, Illinois. So Stiletto steps in. First pitch from Miller, a swing and a foul off to the left and out of play. Strike one. Stiletto hitting 133, he's two of 15. And Stiletto steps back in. Charlie Miller looks in and the right-hander hurls and a check swing on a pitch in a field turf, strike two. Miller worked a third of an inning on Sunday, worked a third of an inning on Saturday against the Norse of Northern Kentucky. He has Stiletto set up, now the pitch. Missed with an inside for a ball. Top of the seventh. Missouri's been out hit five to four, but the Tigers lead four to three. Miller winds and pitches. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Got him with a changeup, one away. Big strikeout for Miller to open up his out. Eric Jackson made it clear that he was going to use a lot of pitchers if necessary in this game. And Miller starting it off the right way. That's the eighth lion down on strikes from Missouri pitching. First pitch to Funkhauser in the field turf, ball one as he showed a bunt. Funkhauser is walked and he is struck out, but still reached first base as he struck out on a wild pitch. Got away from Cerna. Now the 1 0 on the way to the number nine batter. That's in the field turf. 2 0. It's Miller trying to find his release point. Derek Jackson, the first year head coach of the Missouri Tigers, watching the action out of the dugout. As Miller hurls, missed outside, 3-0 to the number nine batter. We haven't been able to get this guy out. Munkhauser, been on base both times with Shea on deck. Here's the 3-0. 
Strike called three and one. Funny how that works, isn't it? There's a certain guy in the lineup you never are able to retire. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. Swing on a little flare down the right field line going foul and is out of play. Right through that niche that used to house the tarpaulin, the tarp down that line. Yeah, is there anything much down there now? Maybe a couple of L screens? I see something, but it doesn't look like a tarp anymore. No, there's no tarp down there. The, I, the, the spool that they used to roll the tarp up on, I think, is down there. Yeah. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and a fly ball foul off to the right, not a play. Yeah, the spool is there, and there's a bench, but nobody uses that bench during the game. That'd be an interesting place to watch a game from. You just have to watch out for the foul balls, right? Can you see home plate from that little spot? You might need a couple of risers. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball struck him out. Look, a big pitch by Charlie Miller as he strikes out Funkhauser on a breaking ball down and in. He got him. And there's two away. That's a huge out here in this game. A one-run contest. And now to the plate comes Shea. It's a tough pitch to handle, too. That one breaking in on Funkhauser as that big overhand curveball just nips the corner. First pitch to Shea is in for a strike, 0-1. Miller mixing speeds here. One run contest. We're in the seventh. Miller delivers. Curveball beauty for a strike. I think he got him with a changeup. I think he struck out Funkhauser with a changeup. Here comes the pitch to Shea, fastball in the dirt. If that was the changeup, it had some serious, serious late tumble to it. It yeah, looked like side, it was. Arm side run. It ran. looked like a slider or curveball, and I, I, I guessed curveball. Here is the one two. Check swing. It is a strike three called on the swing as Colin Shea is out, and Charlie Miller strikes out to side as he takes care of business here in the top of the seventh. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Tigers looking for some insurance runs. They lead Lindenwood four to three. This is Mizzou. They hit the road after this game here in Columbia and they'll travel down to Murray, Kentucky. Here's the first pitch on the way to Curtis. Slider is outside, ball one. Curtis is struck out and bounced back to the mound. He's looking for his first hit of the game. And the offering on the way, swing and a miss. 0-2. Jet Jackson's been clocked at 88, 86, 87 miles an hour. In his second inning work as he follows Michael Walsh. Now the pitch. Curve ball struck him out looking. Well, I stand corrected. I had to count wrong. The first pitch was called a ball. One and two. So now the pitch on the way to Curtis. And a swing and a miss on a fastball he ran in on him. And there's one away, another Tiger down on strikes. Jackson has faced two Tigers and he has struck both of them out. One away. Now a chance for Tucker Moore to get a look at this right-hander who has taken control since entering the game for the starter, Michael Walsh. Here's the pitch to Moore. Fastball low, ball one. Michael Walsh's day is done. Five and two-third innings, four hits, four runs, walked three, struck out three, hit two batters. 84 pitches. That curveball's called a strike. And Jet Jackson is feeling, feeling it. No fear. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss and a sweeping breaking ball, and it's one and two. He's got the Tigers wailing at it, feeling for it. Now the one-two. Swinging a high fly ball hit in the left. On the move, the left fielder, Jet. James Jet is there, and he makes the catch for the uh, As Moore popped it up. The Tigers having their hands full with this Lindenwood pitching staff here today. 
And it wasn't the wrong idea for Moore, but didn't drive through the ball, and today that's not going to earn you much. The way the conditions were on Sunday, that one might have sailed over the boards. And Tucker is looking to extend a hit streak today. He'll have to count on his mates to get him another chance. Austin swings and hammers one deep down the left field line, but it's hooking foul. And 0-1 to Trevor Austin. Tigers with just four hits in this game. Austin has one, Lovich has one, Garcia has one, and Cerna has the other. There's a breaking ball down, count even, and a ball and a strike. Bats have been quiet. They banged out 12 hits Sunday. They had 16 hits on Saturday against Northern Kentucky. Only had four hits Friday night. And Austin is hit on the hand by that pitch, and that one stings. As Trevor Austin, about 15, 20 feet down the first baseline, drops to his knees, and he's trying to shake it off. I don't know if he got his hand or might have got his elbow. Uh, I think it got him on the hand. Let's take a look. A forearm, maybe. Maybe up, up on the wrist instead yeah, of on the forearm. hand directly. And the Tiger trainer, Kyle Holland, will come out and have a look at everything. And hopefully everything's in its place and Trevor Austin can continue. Carrick Jackson is now walking out along with Jabari Brown, the Tigers' first base coach, to have this powwow with Trevor Austin, who is the last person you want to see get a visit from the trainer. He works too hard at his craft and is too key a member of this ball club. An injury is the last thing anybody needs, and fortunately Trevor's going to walk it off and stay in this game. That's the eighth time this year Austin's been hit. The eighth time he's been hit, and this is a 12th game. That brings Jackson Lovich to the plate. Wind blows from the left field corner towards the right field corner. At about 10 mile an hour, reasonable speed, unlike what we saw over the weekend. Here's the pitch on the way to Lovich, and there's that breaking ball, low ball one. Looks like a curveball that's got horizontal and vertical break. Lovich looking for his second hit of the game, first RBI, the pitch. Check swing, he went around, strike one. Ball and a strike, that pitch was down and into it. And Lovich could not hold up. Since you mentioned eight times hit by a pitch in game number 12, that would be on pace to break the Missouri record for most times hit by a pitch in a season. Tex, would you like to hazard a guess as who holds that record? John Hayes, the guy that comes to mind, but I don't think that's right. It is not John Hay, but that's a good guess. Here is the 1-1, one, one, and Lovich swings and misses a pitch down and in. Want to try again? Uh, let me think a little bit. Uh, he played on some good teams. Runner has his lead from the stretch, the pitch. Swing and a number off the end of the bat to the first base dugout. I give up. 25 times Brock Bond was hit by a pitch in 2007. It's on a very good team. Team that hosted a regional. Wow, only, how was that, 20 sometimes? Well, Lovich has just been hit by a pitch. You say 25? 25 is what the book says is the record for a single season. Is this, who's in second place on that list? They do not list who's in second place on that list, and it's just mentioned at Mr. Bond. Now Missouri's got runners at first and second in the bottom of the seventh inning. With two outs, and Peer is the batter. Put it, well, this it seems like guys like Jay Stingler and, like I said, John Hay had been hit a ton of times way back in the days. By the way, his daughter is a catcher on the Missouri softball team. Yeah, that's right. Abby eventually had to make a choice whether to play baseball or softball. She played baseball really growing up and then switched over to softball and it's landed her at the division one level and hopefully many happy returns for Abby Hay as a Missouri Tiger behind the dish. Actually John's assistant Justin Tao down at Rockbridge as a coach. Two on, two out, bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, I question that, only 25 hit by pitches. That just seems low to me. Pierce steps in, looking for his first hit, and he takes a 
Low ball one after a visit from the dugout to Jet Jacks. Quite a few Missouri Tigers were hit by a pitch last season. The team was hit 88 times, and Austin led that team a season ago with 15 times hit by a pitch. Here's the offering. Swing and a miss. Pierce swung right through a breaking ball. One on one. Jet Jackson doesn't throw anything straight either. Got good movement. And Pierce swings and fouls it off, and now Pierce got a 1 2 count. Missouri stranded two runners in the sixth inning. They had two on with two out and couldn't score. Stranded a couple runners back in the fourth when they sent nine men to the play. Tigers have stranded the total of four here today, as has the Lions. Here's the one two to Pierce. Swing and a pop up, shallow center. Center fielder on the move, Shea going out to shortstop and making the catch is Funkhauser for the out. And the inning is over. As the Tigers come away with no runs, there were no hits, no error. Home run by Dawson Hokuff to go up one to nothing. And we're gonna get a pinch hitter as Jet will be, yeah, will be lifted and Cam Edwards will be the pinch hitter. Cam Edwards, another left-handed batter. As he steps in. So Edwards gets his first at bat of the day. He's hitting 171. He has hit a home run. Edwards from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Here's the first pitch on the way to Edwards. He lays down a bunt towards third. Cologne will field it, has no play. It's a leadoff single as Edwards lays down a bunt for a hit perfectly executed. There's the first hit off of Charlie Miller. Well, there wasn't any success against Miller for the Lions trying to swing the bat the conventional way, so just lay it out there, and it was a wonderful bunt. Really no chance for J.C. to do anything with it. Arnett steps in. He is doubled. He's flied out twice. Miller comes set. Edwards with a lead, breaking ball, swing and a miss, strike one. We're in the eighth. 4-1 Tigers. Edwards has a short lead. Miller kicks and pitches. Breaking ball hit towards the left side. Fielded by Cologne, the second one on the first. That's a double play. Cologne moving to his left, made a nice pickup. He threw to Trevor Austin, and Austin's relay was on the money. And in the inning, after a leadoff base hit for Edwards, the Tigers spin a 5-4-3 double play. Base is empty for Dawson Hoka. And Big double play. JC made that look like he's done it a few times, using his momentum to flip it over to second base, and Austin. First pitch to Hoka, swing and a miss and a changeup, strike one. In fact, put that in a pretty good place for Trevor to receive it too. Just a little bit elevated so Austin could take that momentum and swing it around the horn. Hocuff waits the pitch. And it's in the field turf and the count evens out at a ball and a strike. Hocuff was hit by a pitch in the sixth and scored. He hit his third home run of the year back in the second. He has five runs batted in on the season. Big strong. Left hand of batter, the DH, Dawson Hokup. Now the pitch. Fastball outside, two and one. Two outs in the inning. After an infield hit by Edwards, pinch hitting. Then the double play ball. Now the 2 1. And that missed up and in. On deck is Logan Stevens, a left hand of batter who pinched hit back in the sixth inning and has remained in the game. Here comes the 3-1 for Miller. And he walked in. As Miller missed with a fastball outside. And there's Miller's first free pass of the day. They weren't going to let Hokuff beat him. Right fielder, number 24, Logan Stevens. As Logan Stevens makes his way to the play. Stevens delivered that RBI single earlier in the game.
Got a pinch runner down at first base. Yeah, that's Ambrose Russo coming in. Ambrose Russo. He gets a lead. Stevens waits. Miller pitches. Breaking ball low, ball one. Miller has now worked two thirds of an inning here in the eighth. He's been out there an inning and two thirds. I think that's a career long for him. Charlie comes set. And the pitch. Curveball in there for a strike, and that evens it at one and one. Yeah, Miller had gone an inning and a third versus Simo on last Tuesday. Trying to get out of this eighth with a one run lead. The right hander fires. Swing and a miss at a sinker. Another changeup. That changeup has been devastating for Miller today. Does he got one left to get out of this eighth inning? With a lead at first base. Russo, he's going. The pitch is strike three, called a curveball. Struck out the batter, and the inning is over. In the inning, no runs, a hit, no errors, a man left. We move to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Tigers. Strikeouts, opponents hitting 259 against Carson Subert on the course of this season. There has been a defensive change for the Lions as well as Cam Edwards is inserted into center field. We'll try to get that set for you as we go through the inning. Here's the pitch now on the way to the left hand of batter. Garcia, or rather Corona, swinging a foul back, strike one. Well, I'd say Russo probably takes over in center and they move Shea to right, is that what they did? Shea's in left. Here's the pitch on the way. Corona squares the bunt, takes it down and in. Ball one. Shea is in left. Edwards is in center. Edwards pinch hit for Jet. So I think Jet's removed from the game. Here's the pitch on the way. Yeah, that means Steven's still out and right. There's a pitch outside, two and one. Missouri needs an insurance run, if not two or three. As Corona leads off, followed by Garcia, then Colon. Here is the 2-1. Swing at a miss. Corona had a big rip at it and came up empty. 85-mile-an-hour pitch from Carson Suber. Two balls, two strikes. Corona swings and fouls it off. Well, getting Corona on as a leadoff hitter in this eighth, not just for the tenor of this game, but just to get Danny's feet underneath him here at home would be very key. Here comes the 2-2. Swing and a foul tip. He struck him out. As Corona's problems continue, and Subert comes in and opens up this outing with a strikeout, and that brings Garcia to the plate. Garcia is one for two, making his return. Scored a run, he's been hit by pitch. Carson Subert, the former Francis Howe Viking pitches. It's outside for a ball. Last year, Subert was one and three, made 17 appearances, start at one game, had an earned run average of 6.14. As Subert brings it in, missed with it outside. Two and oh, Tigers have had some players from Francis Howe High School over the years. They've produced some. There have been some sprayed around the SEC. Four three, Missouri in the eighth. Swing and a foul off the end of the bat by Garcia, and Matt's going to tell himself that was not a good enough pitch to swing at at two and zero. Oh. It was out on the outer half, and Garcia took a flyer on that pitch and fouled it off. Here's the two one. Swing and a line drive in the center. That's going to drop for a base hit. As Matt's got his second hit of the, of the afternoon. He's aboard for Cologne. He handled that like a veteran. Like you said, Tex, he tried a little bit too hard at 2-0 and, oh, and then 2-1. and one. 
He gets one out over the plate, away from him, down at the knees, and just lines it back right back where it came from. And that's a key insurance run. The Tigers did not add on insurance in the late innings on Sunday, and eventually it helped get him beat by a very game Northern Kentucky club. Can they add one or more here? Stepping in is Cologne, and they bounce it up there. There goes Garcia on a late break towards second. He's in there safely as the ball skips into center field, and the Tigers have an insurance run in scoring position. Ball one to Cologne. Well, the wild pitch helps Matt Garcia, and he decided late after that bounced up and off the chest protector of Honeycutt is when he decided to go. Could have been a close play at second with a good throw, but it wasn't a good throw. Cologne waits, the pitch on the way. Fastball called a strike on the outside corner. Tigers scored all their runs at the bottom of the fourth inning. Went into that inning trailing one to nothing. Strung together a couple hits, took advantage of a couple of walks and a hit bats. Then picked up a big two out hit. The pitch on the way. Cologne sprays it to the right and out of play. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Missouri spun a big double play in the top half of this inning. To hang on to that one run lead. Here's the one two. Cologne takes it off the plate for a ball. As Cerna. Trying to time this pitcher in the on-deck circle for Missouri. We do see text the Missouri closer, Jacob Peden, starting to get loose in the left field bullpen. Subert fires, swinging a base hit through the left side. Garcia had to freeze. He'll check in the third base. Cologne with his first hit of the day. And Missouri's got runners on the corners with one out for Mateo Cerna. Back-to-back -back hits. For the second time in the game, Cologne's first hit of the day. By the way, Garcia has a two-game hitting streak dating back to last year. I'm glad you kept that in the memory banks long enough it to make it here. It just popped in. It just finally rolled around. The old hard drive's working a little slower sometimes. <laughs> sure that's not a floppy disk? <laughs> it could be. Mateo Cerna steps in. Tigers have the double steal in line here as well. Here's the pitch, runner first go, swinging a foul off to the left and out of play, strike one. Cerna had a chance to drive in insurance runs in the sixth inning and struck out. That was against Jet Jackson, who was the second pitcher to work in the game for Lindenwood. Now Cerna batting for the fourth time in the game, facing a third different pitcher. Digs back in, Subert comes set. The right-hander throws the first of the runner back. There is a lion lefty getting loose. His name is Chris Rogers, Tex, freshman. Now the 0-1 from the right-hander. On the way to Mateus Cerner, swinging a ground ball, hit to second. He backs up on it, goes the second one on the first. A wild throw to run scores. And the Tigers get an insurance run. I don't know if they were going to get Cerna at first base with a good throw once the second baseman Ludwig backed up on it. And the Tigers have an insurance run. It's five to three. Yeah. Be a fielder's choice for Cerna. And an RBI, I would think. Yeah, it worked out a little bit of a slowly hit ball. If that's hit more crisply, it might turn into a double play to end the threat, but I believe that's how they've ruled it. Fielder's choice and RBI for Cerna, his third of the game. That brings Curtis to the plate. He swings and lines one into the right center field alley. That's down for a base hit. Cerna makes the turn and races for third. He's in there safely. And Derek Curtis has a base hit. And the Tigers now have runners again on the corners with two outs for the top of the order in Tucker Moore. It's the third hit in the inning off of Subert. Well, Tucker Moore gets his chance. If he wants to turn his hitting streak one game longer, he'll have to do it right here in this plate appearance. Moore has...
grounded out to lead off the game, grounded out to lead off the fourth inning in which the Tigers later played at four runs, popped out to start the fifth, and he flied out to left field to start the seventh. So he's been in leadoff spots the whole game long, and now the Tiger one-hole hitter gets a chance to knock somebody in. Stiletto, by the way, is playing second base as Ludwig is out of there. This pitch is low for a ball. Remember, he was lifted for the pinch hitter. Ball one to Moore. Runners on the corners. Can Missouri pad this 5-3 lead? The pitch, runner first goes. The pitch is outside to throw to second. Is not in time, a stolen base. Stolen base for Curtis. Staying put at third was Cerna. And the second baseman, Stilato, was hopping up and down as that ball might have beaten Curtis, but Jarek slid to the outside of the bag and got there just ahead of attack. Now a hit would be two more runs. The pitch outside for a ball to Tucker Moore. It's 3-0 to Moore. On deck is Austin. Missouri now has seven hits in this game, three of them in this inning. They had three in the fourth when they scored four runs. Now the offering, strike called, Moore taken all the way, three and one. We're in the eighth. Outfielder straight away for Lindenwood. Subert pitches, a swing and a foul. Moore had a pitch and just missed it. And that was an aggressive swing and it needed to be as that pitch was hanging over the inner half, just a bit elevated, and Tucker would like another shot at that one. Maybe he'll get a mistake here on 3-2. Oh, wait. Subert fires, swinging a foul back. He ran another fastball in on it. He got, that one at 85. He got the same type of pitch, and Moore, again, just did miss it. He had the right idea. If he gets that bat barrel raised to connect it out over the plate, that's in the left field corner. Full count, runners at second and third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a pop-up, left side of the infield. Who wants it? The third baseman calls for it. Ornette makes the catch near the bag for the out, and the inning is over. But the Tigers pick up a much-needed insurance run. They got one run on three. Pitcher of record on the losing side in Sunday's game where he pitched an inning, scattered two hits, two runs earned, got a strikeout through a wild pitch. Peed's first challenge comes from Meyer. First pitch is a cutter, low ball one. Meyer today is 0-2. He delivered a sack back in the sixth inning with the bunt. Two-run game as Peden fires. Fastball outside, and it counts even at a ball and a strike. Miller is finished. Two scoreless innings, struck out four. The pitch from Peden. Good heater on the inside corner for a strike, and it's two and one. He faced seven Lions through 27 pitches, 17 of them strikes. In key situations, Charlie Miller was really good tonight. Now the pitch. Fastball missed inside to run the count to three and one. Honeycutt is on deck. He's their catcher. Then it'll be Stiletto. Peden trying to close the door, working on the six, seven, and eight hitters in this frame. Here's his 3-1 on the way. Strike call, fastball at the knees, inner half. Full count. Yeah, that double play Charlie Miller induced in the eighth inning was absolutely huge. Miller struck out the side in the seventh. Good outing for the freshman. Here's the payoff pitch. He walked in, ball four, low and away, and here we go in the ninth inning. As Peden issues the walk. Peden had his problems on Sunday. Gave up a couple of hits to open up that frame and the Tigers could not find a way to answer after they squandered the lead in the ninth. To the plate comes Chase Honeycutt. Missouri needs another, another double play ball. Honeycutt is one for three. I think there might be a pinch runner at first base tax, but he's wearing a number that's not on the roster. I see number 10 out there at first. From the stretch, here's the pitch to Honeycutt. Slider, low, ball one. 
I'm going to mark down number 10. So Myers lifted. Here's the pitch. Low. Peden has fallen behind 2 0. Oh. And Cerna, the catcher, will go out and talk. And Matt Garcia is going to come in and get in on this conversation, too. Garcia, one of the veterans. Boy, just for that reason, so nice to have him back on the field. Matthew making his presence felt. I just hope that Garcia and Cerna don't sp talk Spanish to Peden. <laughs> oh, I don't know how much Spanish Jacob Peden knows. He might have picked up some from his teammates. Quite a few of them speak Spanish pretty regularly. He may have picked other. some up right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what they were told him. First, this pitch to Honeycutt's in there for a strike. He took a little off of it, floated it in at only 90 miles an hour. We're in the ninth. Tigers with a 5-3 lead. Here's the pitch from Peden. Cutter just missed, and it's 3-1. and one. Jason Blackburn said it was out of the zone. Here's the pitch on the way. Strike called inside corner. Honeycutt thought he had walked, and he looks at Blackburn. Stiletto waiting on deck. Peden comes set. Here's the payoff pitch. Swinging a foul to the right out of play. We'll do it again. You can see Jackson Lovitz looking towards his dugout, which is on the top step as usual, but making some noise right here. And he was kind of giving him the give me more sign out there at first. The Tigers trying to push with some energy through the finish line here. Another 3-2 on the way to Honeycutt. Curveball, slow roller, left side, tough play. Garcia with a backhand will throw to first, not in time. Garcia kept the ball in the infield, had no chance to throw out Honeycutt. Garcia made a good throw, but it was too late. Now there's two on, nobody out. That's an infield hit. A little bleeder hit to the left side of the infield. Man, it's just not easy, is it? You I mean, gotta expect this. The Leto now will be asked to bunt here. You can't do much more than Matt Garcia did on that play. The problem was that if Honeycutt had been given an opportunity to roll the ball out, he couldn't have done it better than what he did right there. A long way for Garcia to go. Stiletto getting some instructions here on this offensive timeout. And another pinch runner now in the ball game. It's Matthew James is the pinch runner. He's running for Honeycutt. No one out, two men aboard, two run ball game. Stiletto steps in. Anthony shows the bunt early. Here's the pitch on the way. It is bunted back towards the mound, fielded by the pitcher. He throws the first, not in time. As Peden had trouble getting the ball out of his glove. Everybody is safe. Now the tying runs are in scoring position and there's still nobody out. As Stiletto laid down a decent bunt, Peden just had trouble getting it out of his glove and now the bases are full. Yeah, that extra beat cost him that time as Stiletto got out of the box in a hurry after laying down that bunt, as you said, decent quality enough that time and now all of, all of a sudden Peden is in a butt, quite a bit of trouble. That brings to the point Funkhauser to the shortstop. First pitch, fastball in there, strike one. Still nobody out here in the ninth. Base is full of Lions. By three, Tigers lead. Pete comes set. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing and a tap foul, strike two. Pete needs a strikeout and then the double play ball. Missouri defensively has the corners in. Middle infielders looking for the double play. Peden ready with an 0-2 to Funkhauser. Curveball, swing and a miss, he struck him out. And there's one away. I say curveball, probably to Cutter if it's Peden out there. But he got him with the off-speed pitch and there's one out. It acted that way. By the way, Tex, Isaiah Frost entered the game as a defensive replacement to start this inning. He's out in left field. Tucker Moore moves from left field to right. Stepping in is Shea. 
Shea, one for three today, first pitch on the way. Fastball right down central, strike one. A leadoff walk, an infield hit, then a bunt to load the bases. Now Peden comes set, the pitch on the way to Shea. Swinging a foul down the right field line, out of play, strike two. 0-2 to count. On that bunt, what do they rule? Do they rule it a hit? I believe so. Take a look. I think you have to. Peden is ready. Here's the 0-2 to Shea. Curveball, slow roller hit to the left side. Collode's got it. The second one, no relay to first, and a run scores. But there are now two outs. As, my, as the pinch runner comes in to score from third base, James goes to third. And Stiletto is out five to four. Wasn't hit hard enough really to get a double play. Shea is on at first, reaching on the fielder's choice. Tying runs at third. It's a 5-4 game. And stepping in is Edwards. He laid down a bunt for a hit back in the eighth inning. Edwards steps in. Peden comes set, the pitch on the way. Edwards takes a fastball for a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Even with two outs, I don't think you can discount the possibility of Edwards trying another bunt here. Lions have already used a safety squeeze in this game, although the squeeze cannot be traded for an out here. Here is the 0-1, just low for a ball, one and one. Cologne playing even at third base with the back. He's even with the base. With a left-handed batter up there in Edwards. Here is the 1-1. Curveball just missed outside. Two and one. Five, four, top of the nine. Two outs, two on. Peden set. Here's the two one pitch. Fastball nips the outside corner for strike two. And now Missouri is a strike away from their sixth win of the year. Trying to snap Lindenwood's four game winning streak. Runners get their leads. James at third. Shea at first, the pitch on the way. Swinging a foul back as Shea was off and running on that 2-2 delivery. We'll do it again. The battle, though, that has to be handled is the one at the play. You get Edwards, it's over. Edwards steps back in. The 2-2 from Peden with two outs. On the way home. Curveball, swing and a miss, he struck him out. Tigers win as the Tigers knock off Lindenwood here by a final score, five to four, as Peden works out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam.